Seventh stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series 2022, the St. Lawrence River, and our Minn Kota unlocked the lake. And Ronnie, somebody gave the guys the keys to the lake this week. There's one of the most extraordinary performances by a body of water, by one of our playing fields, and by the 90 anglers, all 90 of them really just went big on this one. Oftentimes through four days of an Elite Series event that include Lake Ontario and the St. Lawrence River, you don't get the chance to unlock the lake because you're prevented from going to the lake. You have to stay in the river. You have to be confined to calm areas. But this week, Tommy, pristine conditions, and we saw the top four anglers really prosper. All of them having over 98 pounds. What an incredible week. So why don't we kick it off for our Minko to unlock the lake with our fourth place finisher, Chris Zaldane. He's been a little bit sneaky the last few events, Tommy. He's having a pretty, pretty darn good year for progressive oh, angler absolutely. of the year race. He's moving up the leaderboard every event there, but sneaking into the final oh, day cut, man. really not knowing much about his pattern, but then moving up on the final day as well into the top five. Oh. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. He's sixth in angler of the year. Uh, this was his best event so far. Uh, third place at Pickwick coming into this. Everything going Chris is wet. <laughs> Yeah, Chris obviously oh had something different going. We got to see him on the final day of this event. We saw him in the morning and then he made a longer run out to some other areas and we lost a little bit of signal with him. But for Chris Zaldane, he operated shallow for the most part like a lot of our anglers did, but he did it differently. I asked him what was the deal with him exclusively throwing a chatterbait up there to catch bigger smallmouth instead of a hair jig, instead of just a, a wacky rig or a drop shot or a Ned rig. And he said, I don't know what there was about it. It just worked. And I know a chatterbait often attracts big bass, but normally you might need a little chop on the water, especially in that shallow of water around smallmouth. Calm, cool conditions today and this week for Chris Aldane, and it still paid off with that big power fishing bait. Yeah, made his own great move throughout the course of the tournament. 21 pounds and 8 ounces, 38th place on day number one, moved up to 28th place with 23.11 on day two, his big day. 27.04 on day three to move all the way up into the top 10 into six and wraps it up in fine fashion, 25-12. Tommy, I will take it. Chris Aldane, 27 pounds on day three to make the top 10 cut. I needed that for my Drain the Lake team. I'm super glad he made the jump up. It's kind of hard saving Chris Aldane. This was a great Chris Aldane schedule this year with Lake Fork, Pickwick, St. Lawrence River on there as well. We expect him to factor and that's why he's top six in Angler of the Year. Well, another angler that started out with a tough first day would be Stetson Blaylock, truly one of the stars of the Bassmaster Elite Series 21-15. That sounds terrific. <laughs> Anywhere we go, but that was a disappointment. A wait like that on day one left you back in the pack, and certainly it had uh, uh, Stetson Blaylock back way behind the top ten. Yeah, we were talking about what would it be for the cut line this week. Maybe 18, 19 a day will get you the cut. No, it had to be well over 20 pounds just to make the cut. We had eight anglers over 40 pounds for two days get left behind and didn't fish on day three. And for Blaylock, Zaldane, even really like a Shane LeHue, we saw guys get better every single day. And one thing I think that was for, for Blaylock and for Zaldane is that we had three really rough days of practice weather-wise. Then we had an off day where the waters calmed down. It was just like it was in the tournament, pristine. They didn't have that info though. They did not get to go fishing on that Wednesday, that off day. Thursday's their first day out there. They go with their gut and their intuition. They realize they're behind the eight ball a little bit and that maybe fish have Look progressed. Maybe they've moved one. shallower. Maybe they've moved deeper. And these guys were able That's to intersect with them on day pounds. two going through the rest of the week. And for Blaylock, we have seen him show up in some of the highest weight smallmouth events we've ever seen. I remember Lake St. Clair for the Angler of the Year Championship, the Seth Fighter one. Uh, Stetson Blaylock yeah. was right there trying to get the victory yes. as well. And this week in the top three, just really rock solid. And on that final day, Tommy, yeah, I mean, he caught so we many fish. Right we were unsure what his weight was because because by the time Bass Track was updating, he had another four or five pounder in the boat to call once again. Absolutely. His big day, of course, again, 27-11 on day number two. He made his turnaround quickly after day number one. Caught two giants in his back, and he caught a couple of them right out in front of the takeoff. And then he spent most of the rest of the tournament in Lake Ontario. Yeah, he was one angler who kind of split his 20 bass that he weighed in on the Elite Series stage this week. He split most of them in the lake and in the river. Uh, we saw a lot of guys just sell out for the lake exclusively. Some guys in our top 10 stay exclusively in the river for him. He got to, you know, be comfortable coming back maybe an hour early, maybe 30 minutes early and having a high quality spot to fish near the ramp. That was key for him, especially like you said on day two. Third place for his best event of 2022. has got him in 12th for Angler of the Year. Just another typical year for Stetson Blaylock. Yeah, and we saw
saw that at the Classic. What a performer on the biggest stage there. We thought he maybe had the win. He loses the Classic by less than or by about a pound or so in third place. Another third He's place finish up. this year in two of the most high profile events we'll have this season. Tommy, I think Stetson's on the right track. His wife there. texted me and asked, when is he going to pull through for a second Elite Series title? And I said, hey, the more shots on goal you have, the better it gets for you. It's only a matter of time. Not worried about that for Stetson Blaylock. Well, one person that no one could keep their eyes off of from a week before the tournament, a month before the tournament, all the way through it was Corey Johnston. All four days on Bassmaster Live, we yeah. threw a camera in his boat on day one because we expected him to That's factor. And boy, did he stayed in the top five basically all week. Day three. It will be a day that haunts Corey Johnston forever. It seems like there's always a tough day out of his four days at St. Lawrence River. We've seen in the past years he had mechanical issues on day two of an event and was late and lost out on the cut line or on day one of that event, I should say. And then other events, maybe managing fish, sharing fish, and it didn't work out on the final day for him. He led going into the event last year. This year, 21 pounds and change on day three. That is so subpar for this week's fishing, but boy, did he make up for it. 28-8, the biggest elite series five fish limit of smallmouth in history. Yeah, well, a tur greatest day, may well, it was the greatest day as far as a, a limit goes in the tournament. And, uh, you, you know, you, we were thinking, what does he have going through his mind right now? Does he think he's yes. won it? I, he's smart enough where he was, could not oh. be sure that he had won it. And sure enough, he just got bested. And honestly, we talked and praised the conditions all week, how calm they were for Lake Ontario. We've mm. never seen four days with that without a puff of wind. I, I mean, I barely saw the wind uh, affect the waves out there. And I think that was to the detriment of the Johnstons. If it was a little rougher on Lake Ontario, I think that they're maybe able to survive when the weights go down just slightly. For some guys, their stay ever so constant. 21 pounds would have been much more important in rougher conditions than it was in calm conditions. He wouldn't have maybe fallen Moves back, but still breaking 100 pounds. pounds. He was the Three first person to do it at the weigh-in. Obviously, second one to do it in reality, catching them on the water. We saw that last catch, and we're like, it says 99.9 on Bass Track, but I think he broke. 100 and he surely did second angler of all time to do that he's a fascinating guy and despite all, all the calm weather it was so much fun seeing him do so much actual visual hunting of fish that head constantly on a swivel he's a one-of-a-kind athlete in that respect you got a great pair of eyes yeah and one thing about that is we knew Canada waters would play and with the rough conditions in practice some of the elite series anglers that had never fished in Canada didn't get the opportunity to probably explore it and know exactly what it was worth so they had to stay in those bays in the New York side of Lake Ontario and and then we saw Chris Johnston and Corey Johnston live in those Canada Bays. They knew what to look for. If the fish weren't there in practice, they know they're going to show up at some point. And boy, did they lean on some of those spots. It was awesome to see on day one, 25 plus pounds in his bag. And he said, I've only hit a quarter of my spots. We knew he was going to be in it to win it till the end. He'll be in it to win it next year <laughs> yet again. No doubt about that. Well, let's get to our winner now, the rookie Jay Shakurit. Talk about that difficult practice. People found varying amounts of success based on what they found during those difficult days. Jay made the right decision. He found the right spots. Absolutely unbelievable performance by our youngest Elite Series champion ever, Jay Shakurit, a rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series, his first trip to the St. Lawrence River, and these probably will be his best seven days he's ever remembered. You said it. A tougher practice, kind of knew what he needed to do, though, to maybe survive. Two fish on yes. day one and midday, he sees a fish bust on some bait, and boy, did he capitalize on that, knocking out the rest of his weight in that close vicinity and really dialing it in. That was very cool this week. Davey Hyde told us on Bassmaster Live, his spot was a little different because it was shallow like a lot of other guys, but it had a lot of bait present, which is going to keep those fish congregated no matter which stage of the spawn they're in. And Jay Shakir, man, calm, cool, under pressure. I didn't even see him blink once this week, and he performed with some of the best smallmouth anglers on his tail all week. And actually four great days. I mean, 26-13 on day one. In second place, though, after it all, 25-8 on day two to take the lead. 24-12, solid again on day three. And then 25-8 is what, and it took it to win over Corey Johnston. He did. He didn't need to slip up at all. I mean, we were talking on Bassmaster Live, and we saw him with some spectators congratulating him. and. It was the nicest little ride back from Lake Ontario he's ever probably going to make. But we said we're seeing one of the biggest bags of smallmouth ever. Could he maybe close that gap? He did, but starting four or five pounds behind the leader, it's hard to make up ground when the leader catches 25 and a half pounds on the final day. A great effort all the way through, too, as far as his execution. Super efficient, very little misses, nothing much dumped by the side of the boat. You got to do that to win in this rough crowd. A lot of the Elite Series guys who made the top 10 mentioned, hey, I lost fish on day one or day two, but hey, everyone lost fish this week that mattered. 
I wasn't going to jump in and bust their bubble, but I think the only guy who really didn't lose any key fish that would have mattered was Jay Shakir because if he lost one, he caught one just as big just a few minutes later to make up for it and would have culled that fish out anyway. So the 20 fish that he brought to the Elite Series scales had him over 102 pounds. What an incredible week. Records were broken. We really learned a lot about Jay Shakir. And I'll also mention, I might have counted him out a little bit in our Falcon Rods Rookie of the Year race. He led all year, but really his steam, his the train was slow going down for Jay Shakirit at Pickwick he was overtaken by Jacob Fouts and Joseph Webster but boy did he regain his lead this week now he carries an 11 point lead into the last two events of the season as we head Midwest where he's from yeah we kept watching and watching through the progression of the four days how long can he stay on this tight rope and man oh man he, he just kept it going everything fell into place for Jeff those two spots in Lake Ontario were key for him if you looked at Bassmaster live and watched he had one on the far south side of Lake Ontario <laughs> not far from the bays that a lot of these guys traversed but getting that little distance away from people you'd start to see you know 10 people in this bay 15 people in this bay three people in this bay not many people went as far south and as far west as he did on Lake Ontario. And then he had that closer spot that he was able to go in and cull out some fish or get a bonus fish or two in the morning, in the evening. He really had a good game plan there. And I really don't know, Davey Height said, does Jay Shakir know exactly what he's accomplishing this week? I think early in the, in the event, it was more survival. He had to catch that weight to even be in contention. Kind of started to realize, hey, this is going to be a special week. I just need to keep the train on the tracks, catch 25 a day, and I'll be good. What a remarkable, record-breaking performance. Congratulations again to the rookie, Jay Shakir, and that's our Minn Kota Unlocked the Lake.